it is difficult to get access to mental health during the pandemic because there are limited resources available. Mental illness has increased during the pandemic, along with the need for mental health support. 86% of patients receiving mental health support reported an increase in mental distress. 70% of those treated say the increase in these feelings are caused by the pandemic. In today's episode, we'll look at how the mental health care system is strained, preventing those in need from seeking rapid support. I'm Savannah Craig, and you're watching Local 514. At the start of summer 2020, 16,000 people were on a waiting list to seek mental health support. Last November, this number grew to 19,000. Recent data has shown that the average wait is up to eight months to seek mental health services. Even private therapists are experiencing an increase in clients, including Parneet Chohan, a certified Canadian counselor and somatic experiencing practitioner. I'm having to turn people away. I know many colleagues that are having to turn people away. Practitioners themselves are spread pretty thin. And since the pandemic started officially, um, there's been a really high demand for mental health support. Isolation is not the only component affecting the mental health of many. There are other added stresses that the pandemic has created. Executive Director of AMI Quebec, Ella Amir, has seen this firsthand. People whose work has been either cut down or suspended or cancelled altogether face much bigger challenges, you know, when you can put food on the table, it's a very different challenge than to even, you know, juggle work and children. And all this is very much associated with your mental health, with your well-being. Amina has felt the weight of the pandemic affect her mental health. Local 514 kept her identity hidden so that she could speak unfiltered about her experience with mental health during the pandemic where herself and many around her have experienced increased wait lists and the difficulty of being able to afford mental health services. It might even become a matter of, are you going to be eating and feeding yourself regularly or are you going to be seeking a mental health support? And it's really disheartening because it kind of puts a value on certain people's life based on what financial capabilities they have. And if you don't have that financial privilege, then your life is seemingly unvaluable. Among 1,209 students surveyed across 17 Quebec universities last fall, 52% of them said they needed mental health support. 77% did not seek professional help as a result of not having enough time or not being able to afford it. The Quebec government offers 12 free therapy sessions, either private or group therapy which can be redeemed at a local community service center, also known as a CLSC. Veronique dupont chalouis the manager for the First Line Mental Health Services at the CLSC La Salle and Dorval La Chine, says if someone needs continued support, they will be directed to other free services at the end of their 12 sessions. There is a panoply of uh, external clinics that can also um, provide some longer term support. We also have our our uh, partners with our the specialized services at the Douglas Institute. The West Island CLSC is not experiencing a higher volume of clients than before the pandemic. However, they are experiencing another difficulty. It's not often that the our professionals, our workers, are going through the same things as the clients. We are experiencing distress with the pandemics. We actually need more people to come work with us and we need the newly grads to come and work with us. The Quebec government announced an investment of $100 million in mental health services last fall. But some say that Quebec should be funding more, including Bertrand Shepard, a researcher for IRIS, the Institute for Research and Socioeconomic Information. If we want to do something like have 10 or 12 uh, discussion with a psychotherapist, we should invest around 300 million dollars. Uh, and that would not be a big part of our health system. It's around 0.15% of the healthcare system uh, cost in Quebec. And what I suggest is to double that around 5050 or $600 million uh, to make sure that the result of COVID-19 will not be carried along too much. After that, I'm sure that we can use those mon that money continue to help people. We could not imagine how the society would transform. 
addiction and mental health services in hospitals, all of these can be avoided if access to therapy and psychology was government funded. At the same time, the demand for mental health services is growing. So is the wealth of Canada's richest. Three different ways of taxing some of that wealth are being proposed. It is now believed that Canada's top 20 richest people are now close to $40 billion richer than before the pandemic. California provides an example of raising money through a progressive income tax. The state wants to use money from Prop 63 to pay for the new mental health housing program, and it costs the state nothing to provide housing for our most at-risk residents. Proposition 63 has been in place since 2004. It is an additional 1% income tax for those who earn more than $1 million annually. The tax raises approximately $2 billion each year, which goes directly to funding mental health services, including preventing mental illness from progressing, reducing stigma, and increasing treatment. These services also help pay for workers that reach out to homeless people and triage patients in hospitals experiencing mental illness. A second proposal would be taxing accumulated wealth, not just annual incomes, through a 1-3% to tax on the personal wealth of those with a net worth of more than $20 billion. This tax, similar to those proposed by U.S. presidential candidates Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, would collect between $5 and $20 billion per year. We're proposing a tax on excess profits made by wealthy corporations during the pandemic. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has called for both a 1% wealth tax as well as a temporary tax on excess profits made during the pandemic. Their proposal of a temporary excess profit tax would double the tax rate on excess profits. Both of these would aim to limit wealth inequalities. While many are experiencing job loss, eviction, and increased stress affecting their mental health to provide for themselves and their families, some of Canada's richest families have had their bank accounts grow. Canada's second richest family, the Westons, who own Loblaws, Shoppers Drug Mart, and various other stores you would recognize, have added $1.6 billion to their wealth during the pandemic. This is after cutting a $2 bonus from the hourly paychecks of their essential workers. The Thompsons, Canada's richest family, have had an estimated increase of $8.8 .8 billion. The economy is and new money billionaire Toby Ludke of Shopify after. added $6.6 $6 billion uh, yeah, to his fortune. Instead of putting the burden on people that are struggling, the burden should be on those who have massively profited off the pandemic. It's unfortunate that we live in a country that uh, has one of the best healthcare systems in the world, but for mental health, it has become so neglected. Reducing mental illness in our country will not only take a lot of money, but a lot of individual work. Sometimes it's very difficult, especially if we are really subjected to anxiety and depression and so on and so forth. It's difficult to lift ourselves out of this depression and take care of ourselves. I do want to hope that we all have someone that they feel that they can trust. This someone could assist and could support in, you know, trying to locate some support services. For more information on how to find free mental health care services in Quebec, Check the caption below.